Okay, so this is a two-part question that looks at line integrals. Let's go ahead and check out the first part. So I'm asked to use the sketch to determine if the line integral, the line integral of f along c is less than zero, greater than zero, or approximately equal to zero. And I'm given f equals negative x negative y. C is the oriented line segment from 0 0.50 to 0 0.51. So this is my recreation of the sketch given to you in the book. So here's my curve, oriented going up. And then I have this vector field where all of the vectors point into the origin. And the closer I get to the origin, the smaller the magnitude of the vectors. So how can I decide the sign of this? Well, if my force field goes in the same direction as my curve, the line integral is going to be positive because the force field is kind of helping the curve along. And then it's going to be less than zero if the force field is in the opposite direction of my curve. So like the force field is like going against it, trying to stop it. And then it's going to be approximately zero if the force field and the curve are perpendicular to each other. Well here, I don't exactly have one of those clear cut cases, but I do have all of these little vectors that are going down and into the origin while my curve is going straight up. So they're not going exactly against the grain, but they're still going more against it than they are for it. So I'm going to say that this line of roll is probably negative. And I'm going to get to find out because part B asked me to evaluate that line integral and verify my answer from A. So let's recall the general form of a line integral. So it is the integral of f of r of t dot r prime of t with respect to t, where r of t is the parameterization of the curve. And you probably noticed that I wasn't given one, but I can find one out pretty easily. So let's think about these two points that make up c. I have 0 0.50 to 0.51. Well, the x component of those points stays the same. So I'm going to say for a parameterization of that, the i component would just be 0.5. And then the easiest way to parameterize the move from 0 to 1 is to just put t as the j component. And then say that t is between 0 and 1. OK. So now I have a parameterization. And I can start working on these terms for the line integral. First, let's find r prime of t. Well, the way to find that is to just take the derivative of each term in r with respect to t. So, well, 0.5 is going to be a constant. So when I differentiate with respect to t, I'm going to get 0. And then the derivative of t with respect to t is just going to be 1. Now let's find f of r of t. So the way to do that is to plug in the i component of r of t everywhere I see an x and f, and then plug the j component in everywhere I see a y. Well, this is going to be pretty easy. f is negative x, negative y. So I'm going to get negative 0.5 and negative t. And now I want to take the dot product of that with r prime of t. So remember, that's the product of the i components of the vectors plus the product of the j component of the vectors. So I have 0.5 times 0, which is 0, plus negative t times 1. So my dot product is just negative t. And now I want to take the integral of this dot product. And I'm going to use the same bounds of integration as the interval for t, which is 0 to 1. Well, this is pretty easy. The integral of negative t is going to be negative 1 half t squared. And I'm going to evaluate that from t equals 0 to t equals 1. 
So let's go ahead and plug in 1. I get negative 1 half. And then when I plug in t equals 0, I get 0. So the line integral of f along c is negative 1 half, which confirms my answer in part a, that it was going to be less than 0. And I'm all done.